and Rosell. Be careful, Mark. Be set. Number set. And three, two, one, action. How was that? That was beautiful. Huge. <laughs> 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 It's a fast-paced story that once it kicks off, it doesn't stop moving. It's funny. It's like a funny script. Hit! I think we're doing something that's quite fun and, and tongue-in-cheek. I think it'd be a good date movie, you know? I think it's a funny action comedy film. It was just a laugh, really. It's a really glossy, fun, slick, romantic, caper thriller. It ultimately has something to say about this modern world post-2008 we're in and how we're all trying to deal with it in a different way. I think it's very relevant and it's a film that's current and of our peers, particularly teenagers and later teens who are at university. You know, ultimately we're paying testament to a, to a true story. Um, not necessarily the most honourable or noble one, but a true story. And I think it's important that we kind of respect that by making it believable. I came across the story uh, from my childhood in Manchester and this is a very famous sort of Manchester story about some kids who essentially pulled off one of the most sophisticated heists in British criminal history. No knives, no guns, just old-fashioned guile, really sort of well thought through and well executed scam. And I was absolutely entranced by the story. I met uh, Chris Howard a couple of years ago and he'd written a screenplay. He said he'd never written a script before, but he said, look, you know, I want you to have a look at it. It was credit card fraud. Catch me if you can, meets the Italian job type film. I also did a little bit of research about credit card fraud and there were so many stories about it and obviously as time has gone on over the past two years it's just got worse you know there's, there's more people getting their cars cloned, details taken from the internet so you know obviously it's become kind of epidemic and so um, I thought well you know this is a, a great starting point for a movie because everybody can relate to it. And uh, that's you done then. Thank you so much. It's based on a documentary Chris had seen and we went through the script and it was still at an early stage but there was a real kernel of something great there. When you watch a film about any sort of crime, I think if you're going to make it real you have to have somebody who knows how it works and what they do and how they do it. The parts of it is my story. Um, the diamond heist was uh, something that I did uh, ten years ago. There was no violence involved when we did the, the crime. Um, but obviously to make a film there's got to be different aspects. And if people watch films and say that would never happen or that's ridiculous, how would they do that? Well they did. They did impersonate a crown prince and they did, just by using the telephone, con a jeweller into meeting up with them and getting on the plane and you know they did nick 20 million worth of diamonds. So you know it's true. Basically there was a store in uh, Beverly Hills, uh, it's an exclusive store where um, the Sultan of Brunei required some diamonds a few months beforehand. Uh, we rang them up, told them that we wanted a selection of jewellery, never mentioned money, you know. Uh, we was willing to fly them over to London, that's how it started. So I acquired a lead jet, we flew them over, flowers uh, at the airport, limousines, you know, they were comfortable. The next day, uh, a friend of mine who was a student from Slau, who wasn't even aware of what he was doing. Um, I said to him, look, I need you to do me a favour. Collect a bit of jewellery, dress up, look smart, and uh, you're gonna get picked up. So with bodyguards, they approached the jewellery people and the diamonds were handed over. And um, from then, to be honest with you, we played it by ear. So uh, he's, he's got the diamonds, he's in the limousine, I'm on the phone to him. So right, what's going on? Because uh, I'm in the back of the 
Yeah, man. Go right. Go where's the driver? Goes gone for a leak. I go. So you're in the back of a limo. I go get the hell out there. You know, make a run for it, which he did. Caught the tube home, and then um, the next day I made him travel up to uh, Leeds by train. Collected the, the jewelry off him. So I was uh, arrested six months later, but uh, by that time um, the dams were gone. You know. And uh, so I was charged, served three and a half years, which I did 18 months in Wandsworth and Brixton jails, which were, it was tough. It was 23 hour bang up basically, you know. Um, I was moved up to Manchester, released after serving 18 months. And uh, since then, and that's it, you know, I've uh, never committed a crime ever again. Apart from going into Tesco's and maybe having the odd drink while you're walking around doing a bit of shopping. Uh, that's it. The screenplay came to me around about June 2012 and it was a very different beast to what the end of the film sort of ended up with. Well, the script was about a credit card fraud that happened in 1997 with four guys from Manchester who ripped off jewellers in Beverly Hills, LA. And on its own, I don't think that's enough. I don't think it's particularly big or particularly clever. Um, I'm not impressed to meet people like that who've done sort of, oh wow, I'm the real credit card thief, well, great, yeah, OBE. That, we had to have an extra hook. And the original script, it didn't really have a strong romantic subplot, which funnily enough, this film really needed. Jules went off with his brother Will and they developed successive drafts that we all discussed and there was a conscious decision to make it younger, make the characters younger, which was really important for all of us. Once we decided to change the film to be about students, and the real guys had been students, but you know, they were about 23, 24 when it really happened. But by making them students and setting it in a post-2008 world as opposed to 1997, suddenly it's all post-recession and there are no jobs out there for students. And suddenly, you, you know, suddenly the credit card companies and the banks themselves are the biggest villains of the lot because they've left this complete litany of shit for all these young people to pick up. I think there's a little bit of a, a Robin Hood type theme there. He doesn't think he's robbing off individuals, he sees it as a bigger picture. He thinks that what he's doing is, 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 is right to the extent that he's stealing off banks, uh, corporations. Uh, sort of the big machine as it were and he feels that because of how people are mistreated financially that what he's doing actually isn't all that wrong but it is they are committing a crime but it's kind of highlighting the fact that nowadays students are really struggling to survive and have the right to an education and better themselves once we looked at the film from that perspective suddenly the story works suddenly you've got empathy for these characters and that is what sort of got me excited quite late in the day the project became a lot younger and it's i start to look at other films now and how old all the cast sort of seem this this film needed a young sexy up and coming cast you know we didn't want to work with sort of bigger established stars in the lead roles it was nice to have a young, fresh-faced cast. And I think the characters, I just, I loved the dynamic between our our group. All of the cast have been great, except Ed Spillers, he's a dick. Um, Alfie's fucking, you know, Ed, Ed Seven, Alfie. Uh, Sebastian D'Souza, yeah. I don't really like him. Um, I mean, uh, you know, Alfie's sort of mad. It's been a nightmare and just to spend so much time with Will Poulter. There's always one guy, that is always, or one girl, that's just a bit like, oh. I can't stand him, I think he's a diva. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, he thinks the world rolls around him. Yeah, you know, yeah. we all get our close-ups after Ed. You notice that? Yeah, no. Ed's trailer is twice the size. Yeah, he's a horrible, horrible human. <laughs> <laughs> I'd work with Ed Spillers on The Lonely Place to Die. He's a great guy to work with. Ed, we loved Ed. I mean, everybody knows Downton Abbey, and he's got this great leading man quality. There was no contest. As soon as Ed's name came up, we thought, great. Uh, it was like, right, great. Well, yeah, I'd love to work with Jules again. Uh, that was a massive driving force for me doing this. But also, you know, then you see Alfie Allen attached, Will Porter brought on board, Sebastian, and you go, right, this is, this is a nice young, crop of actors that, that we can really try and create something fun here and that's what we've tried to do I think we you know we've had a lot of fun with making this film he's a very 
easygoing, pleasant guy to work with. And he, he knows his craft. And he came up with some really good character ideas in this. He's just a real person at the end of the day. He's not, he's not a gangster. Uh, and Sam is very much you know, a university student. And I think that's quite of interesting in the sense that this could be anybody doing that. And it, it, it's obviously something that just unravels and gets, he gets way out of his depth. All the boys get way out of their depth. And, and it's one of those he probably doesn't regard himself as a full-on criminal. I love Will Poulter. He is, you know, the cement to this film. He really grounds it. Playing the straight character is a very difficult thing to do. It's, it's often a duller thing to do. He's a great actor from everything. Seen him in, you know, Young Rambo. Uh, he's been in Narnia Chronicles. He's always working on a little bit of character business before the camera rolls. It was a really fun script. Um, you know, and would make a really entertaining movie. And I just love the character of 4D, a lot more intelligent than myself, which was quite, you know, interesting to play, a little bit of a challenge, but interesting. He was a tech whiz and I'm, I'm, I can, like, turn computers on and off. You know, I was a student myself at the time and this was a story about four guys at university. So that was kind of intriguing for me. It was sort of like, you know, I was kind of coming from the same place as him in a way. I mean, I, I don't have much experience with credit card fraud, I have to admit. He's the most remarkable impressionist I've ever come across in my life. In the flesh, anyway. Yeah, that's spritzing your ears. <laughs> spritzing, spritzing. I haven't seen spritz until you've seen naked work. Thanks, mate. He will dig me out every day for something. So I'm really keen on getting inside of transit. <laughs> Can't wait to get inside of transit. And I, I just think there's been a general good vibe amongst us guys to try and <laughs> entertain each other or, or have a bit of one upmanship. It's been a real laugh. You know, sometimes you have to sort of gritty teeth and say yeah that's been really fun I mean it's genuinely been amazing and you know I've made it I feel like a lot of great friends I'd say Yates is definitely more of the rebellious one and um, I'd like to say he's a lovable rogue but I don't really know I think I might be putting a bit of a positive spin on him there he's more just a, a rogue a cheeky rogue um, and there's definitely sort of hope I've put in sort of likeable parts of him because come on everyone likes a bit of a wrong one sometimes don't they Alfie's just a legend. Game of Thrones, he plays such a great baddie in that, and um, he's that snide kind of character. He's quite underhand, but very cheeky with it as well, and um, you know, he just brings a little bit of funny business to each scene. I was in Miami when I got the call that Alfie really liked to play the role, and we all just jumped about. It was like, this perfect. I, I, you know, I think. A lot of these actors, we've got them at exactly the right time in their careers to play these students. And, and Yates, he's a great, great, great role. He's a dreadful, wonderful, spiteful, hilarious, <laughs> conflicted character. He's got a bit of a dark side to him, for sure. It's a very honest performance and an intriguing guy to watch. All these little ticks in the editing room, he's a great guy to cut to. He's always doing something, him and Will. Was doing a little something. Go. Order, ready. Should I try and clear the window with my back if it smashes or not? If you feel free to do that, yeah, feel, feel free. Just don't put your hands in. No, 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 I won't. I won't. Thank you. Okay, here we go, guys. Uh, Hands out. Right. Here we go. And action! I'm really surprised Alfie hasn't had a role like this before. Every role I've seen him in, he plays something completely different. And this was exactly the right role for him at exactly the right time. You hooligan. Alfie's great. He's sort of mad, and I love his mad energy. And it's been a joy working with him.